Chaz Davis and me are on a further training course to sharpen up our road skills. The overall aim is to develop their road craft. It makes them plan further ahead. That gives them time to think and consider what their plan of action is going to be. What does it feel like then to be out on the road then under scrutiny and almost going back to school? Yeah, it definitely felt like that, being yeah. back at school. Riding on the road is not really the place to be trying to be a hero. I know the consequences and being on the track, I know how quickly things can go wrong, but I've got the safety element of the gravel beds and the runoff, whereas on the, on the road you just don't have that. Personal attitude is absolutely vital. That dictates what's in your heart and mind comes out in your behaviour. So we need people to realise the gravity if it goes wrong, but also the enjoyment and fun when you improve that skill. At a crash, the opposite of look, lean and roll happens. You look at the target, you lose your peripheral vision. The second stage is tricep lock, and you lose the ability to steer. The third one, you're grabbing that brake. The reason for, for setting out on that path in the first place is crucial. You get other people that realise that they've got responsibilities, who realise the effect of, of being injured, and they've perhaps had a near miss and scared themselves. The thing that makes riders safer on this is an awareness of road craft, which I think, without exception, none of them had heard of. You can study, you can read about road craft, and you can apply it in your own way, but understanding uh, road craft is the key. You should be starting your overtaking manoeuvre much earlier. Sharon, she spends all her time in London. Once we get out into the rural roads, she feels a little bit uncomfortable, particularly going into right-hand corners, where she's still very much in the middle of the road. She can't see through the corner so easily, and she's potentially bringing herself into conflict with oncoming vehicles. Then the second part of the ride, there's a noticeable change in the way that she's riding. Much better. Yeah. How did you feel about it? Yeah, by the end of the ride, I was a lot more conscious of my positioning, I've got to say. So I need to just apply it to town riding when I get back yeah. to London. <laughs> To start off with, I must admit, I wasn't very confident about positioning on the road. Now, Dave, years following us, then a car started to come out from the left. Could you just tell Martin what that looked like from behind? He was tight up against the left-hand side of the road. Yeah. So his manoeuvre was quite pronounced when the vehicle arrived, rather than already being out yeah. there and kind of out the way. The, the pedal cyclist was a perfect example. Yeah. We're coming down the road, no white line down the central carriageway. Offside for a view, but we could have seen that pedal cyclist a lot sooner than you did. Freaked me out when you went on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> did you come with me? I didn't no. see whether you came with me. No, okay. no. just by coming out there, I could see Charles. It's I could the see door, the isn't it? No. <laughs> okay, you pay your tax. Use both sides of the road. Yeah, you have to mentioned stay up. getting the most out of my tax pound. <laughs> my whole approach. <laughs> to be in my ear talking about things long before I've seen them. That impresses me because they preempt every situation. They're a bit strict in their house with the little ones and the TV, but they get complete freedom to watch motorsport. <laughs> <laughs> That's not harmful. 